Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Calculus 4, Multivariable Calculus, where we are continuing our exposition, our discussion of the concept of an infinite series. And just giving you uh, kind of that big reminder, uh, at the beginning of the section, we or the chapter, we talked about this concept of a sequence. And a sequence is basically a, an infinitely long list of numbers. Then yesterday we introduced a concept called an infinite series and an infinite series is basically the what happens when you sum up or you add up all those entries in on that infinitely long list. To calculate the sum of an infinite series, well if there is a single number sum we would say that the infinite series converges. If we don't have a, a single number for that sum we would say that the infinite series diverges. So far, we've really focused in on one type of infinite series, specifically the geometric series. And um, the, the good part about uh, that geometric series is we have a nice clean formula that we're about to play around with a little bit uh, right here. More broadly, when we were talking about this yesterday, we, we discussed a method for calculating the sum of an infinite series, and that was to find an expression for the partial sums, and then look at the limit as the number of terms in those sums goes to infinity. So we got a whole, like a whole bunch of vocab things going on here. We've got, uh, we have sequences, series, or infinite series, we have partial sums, we have convergence, we have divergence, we have geometric series, um, and probably a few other terms. So there's kind of a whole bunch of vocabulary things here. Um, it's not difficult, but it is. it can be a little bit new and unfamiliar. When we were together last time, we found the formula for the sum of a geometric series. Thanks, Dave. We found the sum for a geometric series, and that formula was pretty, uh, pretty simple. We liked it. So we discovered that the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of a times r to the n minus 1 would equal a over 1 minus r. And this only converges when our r's are between negative 1 and 1. And you might be saying to yourself, hey, Dust, what's up with this uh, n minus one in the power, that doesn't look like the same thing that like what we had yesterday. Because yesterday, if, if I recall, we had the sum of a r to the n was equal to one, a over one minus r. Anyone remember, anyone able to explain why it is that both statements are true? Is it because in the, the statement on the right, we s n equals 1 as the first um, term in the series? Mm -hmm. So you have to specify u minus 1 from it to be the same as the one on the left. And the one on the left, where did we begin? Do you remember? Zero. We began at 0. That's exactly right. Was that, who was that talking? Was that Croy? Yeah. Yeah, nice call. That was exactly right. So... More than, there's more than one way to express these formulas. If you want to start at one, then you're going to end up with n minus one in the power. If you start at zero, you're going to have just an nth power. Same thing, perfect explanation, thank you. So we have this nice uh, formula and let's just practice and see how to work through it. All right, so in example one, we are given, we're given our A and we're given our R equals one third. And so we wanna find the sum. So let's, let's make sure that you're seeing what this means. So this is meaning we have the sum of one over nine times one third 
to the nth power. This is going from zero to infinity. Or you could write this as the sum from n equals one to infinity of one over nine, one third to the n minus one. So those are the two different expressions for the same thing. Or if you wanted to think about it this way, you could say, what are the terms? So the terms would be one ninth plus one ninth times a third plus one ninth times a third squared. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, regardless, these are all different ways of writing the same thing. The sum is pretty easy to find because we can just use our formula. So it's going to be 1 over 9 over 1 minus 1 over 3, which would be 1 over 9 over 2 thirds, 1 over 9 times 3 halves, which is a funny way of writing, I think, 1 over 6. Questions about that? Uh, so why don't we continue adding, why do we stop? I guess, how did we get that sum, sum formula with the one over nine divided by, yeah. This, this was that derivation that we did yesterday where, let me sw switch over to the screen share. The series sum is equal to that. Yeah. The one minus R. So we did this, oh. this whole der derivation where we multiplied by the special one and we simplified. And then we, we noticed that when, R, when n went to infinity, this term went to zero, provided that we had absolute value of r less than one. And so it was just the formula that we derived in class. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. Very good. Very good, cool. I think what I would like to do is skip over the next question, the next example, and uh, do a couple, do, do examples three and four, and then maybe come back and have you talk about example two in the breakout room. Um, so let's skip to example three in the notes. So example three asks us to rationalize um, or to write as a fraction this repeating decimal. Like you might have heard this, us as mathematicians make this statement a whole bunch of times. And we say, you know, when you put that bar over the top and you have that repeating decimal, then this number is a rational number, i.e. it can be written as a fraction, but then we never show you how to actually write it as a fraction. You, you might know how to write one third, or sorry, 0 0.333333 um, as one third or 0 0.1111 as one ninth, um, but, how do you, in general, write a repeating decimal as a, uh, as a fraction? So this is kind of a cool little thing. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to try to unpack what this means. So 5.23 with the little, remember the bar over it means that we repeat the 2, 3 forever. So it's 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So let's think, what does this mean? So this means five plus 0 0.23 plus 0 0.0023 plus 0 0.00023 plus dot, dot, dot. Oh, sorry, going off the screen. Hmm. Let's write these, so the five is gonna, we're gonna treat separately, and then let's write these other terms as fractions. So this would be five plus 23 one hundredths plus 23 
ten thousands plus twenty three one millions, etc., etc., etc. Here, so we're going to treat the five separately, and we're going to say this one is it's it's on its own, and then we're going to recognize that the rest of this stuff is a geometric series. What is the first term in this geometric series? What is our, our A? Not Say again? Five? It's not five, we treat five on its own. Oh, right, so the 23 over 100? Yeah, so it's just the 23 over 100. And so the way this method works, you don't look at the geometric series until the repeating terms begin. And then what is our R? One, two zeros. So times one over 100? Times one over 100. Cool, cool. So all this garbage up here is equal to five plus 23 over 100 over one minus one over 100, which would be five plus 23 over 100 over 99 over 100. which 100 is die a grizzly death. So we have five plus 23 over 99, which, somebody help me out. Make this a single, um, single fraction. My text in front says 518 over 99. Nice. So 5.23 equals 518 over 99. And can you check it on your text and friend? How does that, does that work? Yeah. Five, yeah, do, 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 do. Uh, I wouldn't know how, sorry. That's the extent of my powers. Oh, it's, it's clever. You take, you, in your text and friend, you type 518 and then you do divide by 99, and then you type enter. Yeah, I check, oh, yeah. I check it, it's working. Yep. Sweet. Yeah. Can so, see, go ahead. Can I see all that work? Well, it's kind of secret. There. Is that all visible? Yes, thank you. No problem. So, notice that we started with that repeating decimal, we kind of wrote it out and figured out what it looked like. And then when we identified the geometric series, we just looked for what's the first term, what's the common ratio, and then it was just kind of plug and chug. So not very difficult and gives you a, kind of like a nice, clean way of um, understanding something that you've done. You probably worked on repeating decimals in, I don't know, third grade somewhere in that world. So something that you've been doing for over half your lifetime, probably without really thinking about it, you can now uh, understand more, more completely, which is pretty cool. Questions about this? Very good. All right, let's look at example four. So it, in example four, and this is a three, in case. it's an ugly looking three, but nevertheless. So the sum from n equals one to infinity of three to the n minus one minus one over six to the n minus one. Um, is this a geometric series as it's written? Uh, it doesn't look like it, but we should be able to break it up and factor it. Yeah, what's the thing that's tripping us up, uh, Robert? 
having that n minus one on the top and the bottom? Yeah, the n minus ones are okay here. It's the minus one in the numerator. Yeah, those are okay. The thing that's tripping us up is the minus one below the the blue minus one here. Um, so let's uh, take advantage of our sum rules, sum of our rules, the difference of our sum rules. Anyway, no more puns. Um, let's take advantage of our our sum rule and split this infinite series into two infinite series. What we're about to do only is legit if the series converge individually. And good news, spoiler, they do. So this would be equal to the sum from n equals one to infinity of three to the n minus one over six to the n minus one minus the sum from n equals one to infinity of one over six to the n minus one. Let's play around with our our power rules and kind of some of what we know about exponents. So this first sum would be the same thing as the sum from one to infinity of three over six, one half to the n minus one minus the sum from n equals one to infinity of one over six to the n minus one. If you happen to, are there any questions so far? Very good. If you uh, happen so, to see, oh, go ahead. Go so, ahead, Crow. Because it's one, a one half to the infinite series, it doesn't equal one. So you're right earlier, it doesn't converge. Mm. Um, or it does converge, sorry. It will converge, yeah. They're both going to converge because in this case, the common ratio will be a half. In this case, the common ratio is one sixth. And in both cases, the magnitudes of those common ratios are between negative one and one. Yeah, so it's gonna be okay. Uh, I, if you see how these tie directly into the formulas, great more power to you. We can do that, you can do it directly. Let, just for the sake of, of understanding, let's just write out a few terms because I think sometimes that can help you see what's happening. May I? May I? Yeah. Um, so I see that on the left sum, we have an n minus one in the numerator and the denominator. And the one on the right is just in the denominator. And mm -hmm. it kind of just feels like we're making these n minus ones disappear. But it looks like we can do this. Because yeah, we're using some of our exponent rules. On the right with the one, you could remember one would be the same thing as one to the n minus one. So all I'm doing is I'm taking advantage of the fact that one to any power is still one. Okay. That, that's why I'm able to do this over on the right side. Okay. Does that help? Very much, thank you. Okay. So let me just write out a few terms here on the right. And I, I would encourage you to write out some term, you know, as you're learning this, write out more stuff. And then as you start to understand, you can show less work. Our, we begin by putting in an n equals one. So it'd be one sixth to the zeroth power, which is one. Then we put in n equals two. So one sixth to the two minus one is one sixth. One sixth. And then we put in n equals three, one sixth to the three minus one. One over 36. One over 36, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So what is our a here? One. One over six. A is, a is one and r is one sixth. We can do the same thing on the left, if you put in n equals one, 
get out one. If you put in n equals two, one half to the two minus one or one half, one fourth, and you'll get that a equals one and r equals one half. So that tells us that our overall sum for the for the left part will be one over one minus one half minus one over one minus a sixth, which is equal to a number. Which one is it? I got, uh, when I worked through this, I got four fifths, something like that. Questions? So Dusty, mm -hmm. uh, from the given, can we just write that the uh, sum of n equals zero to infinity so we don't have to write a n minus one because sometimes it might be checked. So you're saying, could we just re-index this? So we, yes. instead of going from one to infinity, we went from zero to infinity? Yes. Yes, as long as you do it right. Uh, so it's gonna be like three n minus one over six n? Yep. Okay. Yep, that would work. Re-indexing is really powerful. So re-indexing is sort of changing what your, your, where you start and where you end, and then also whatever those wherever those indexes show up inside the summation it's called re-indexing it's not hard but it does take a little bit of practice so yes do it but also be a little bit careful okay thank you no problem other questions very good so i have one more example for you here. So this is example number two. And why don't you make sure that you have this jotted down and then I'm gonna put in about 10 seconds, I'm gonna put you into a breakout group for a couple minutes to work through this. Just make sure everybody's tracking what's going on. All right, here you go. Emery, Titus, any questions before you switch over? Titus, you doing okay? Is this 
Well, it's like Dustin always wears them and then brings them all over the place. Yeah. Is back, Jason. You're back. Yes. <laughs> Everything working? Everything makes sense? Yeah, we kind of figured it out really quick, though. Good, good. And, uh, everybody just keeps silence. So. Nice. <laughs> yeah. All right. Should I bring people back then? You think? Give people another yes. minute. Yeah, because right. I think it's really easy to figure out. Yeah, it's not hard. It's just in. It's not hard. And you've worked with summation so much that it's that they're the sigma notation is no longer scary. So it's hopefully so. Yeah, at least that's the plan. Very cool. Welcome back, folks. Are there any questions about this? This meeting is being recorded. Sounds like the new dubstep song. That was nice. Yeah, um, we should make like a little a cassette tape like in, uh, what's the movie, Baby thinking, Driver? Yeah, that, I was just thinking of that. Like a, I need the to meeting, see that the, me, the, me, the meeting is being recorded. <laughs> That'd be awesome. We'll I'm make it an you. honors project to make us a dubstep recording of this meeting is being recorded. <laughs> So that'd be awesome. That's not necessarily a movie endorsement of uh, Baby Driver, but my 13-year-old son thinks it's the best movie ever made. So, wow. Yeah, which is it's on my list now. Thank you. Yeah, I, I don't judge us as parents after you watch it, but uh, anyway. All right. So, any questions about the geometric series before we we dive on, dive in? Um, was the answer negative one over eight? Ooh, that's a good question. I thought I got, what did other people get? I got four. Should be yeah, four. That's what I yeah. got too. I got, I think that's what I got. So Dang. Here's, here's my we work. Multiply in the five, Enrique. Oh, multiply the five. Okay, that's right. Thanks. <laughs> sweet, sweet. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. All right, so let me begin by sharing a pro tip um, that I'm gonna try to maintain throughout this class. So having taught this class a bunch of times, my sense is that, or taught this topic a bunch of times, my sense is that a, a lot of times students lose track of what their tools are. None of the tools are individually difficult, but there's a whole bunch of them. So in this top, in this course, you're going to begin a list of, you should begin a list of famous series, tests, and methods. So far, we have one item on, and I'm going to call it the list. The list. So the only item we have so far on the list is the geometric series, which converges when the magnitude of R is less than less one. Than one. So let's see if we can add something else to the list. So next we're gonna talk about the harmonic series. And so the harmonic series gets its name from the concept of overtones or harmonics in music. Um, if I remember right, what that means is if you play, um, here, hold on one second. Um, so for those of you that play an instrument, maybe you, you recall this concept where you might hit, um, you might hit middle C on a piano, but if you listen carefully, other C's on the piano will start to vibrate as well. Um, the, those are the harmonics or the overtones. So the reason is because the wavelengths of the overtones of a vibrating string are half, a third, a fourth, of kind of that fundamental wavelength. 
Um, so every term in the series after the first is the harmonic mean of the neighboring terms. I include this, this phrase harmonic mean. That's not one that, that I have used much myself, but I did, I think I added a footnote at the bottom of the page about what the harmonic mean is. So if you're trying to understand this, you know, Mr. Google is your friend, maybe it's a Mrs. Google, I don't know. Um, but um, it, this concept ties a little bit to music, it ties to this concept of a harmonic mean. And because it's tying to music and the arts, it's something that will, uh, will have a long, long history, I think going all the way back to the Greeks, if I recall. All right, so we wanna explore the harmonic, the harmonic series and let's do that on, um, let's do that by hand because looking at notes is not very exciting. All right, so in case you weren't tracking, the harmonic, the harmonic sequence would be one, one half, one third, one fourth, one fifth. What we care about is the harmonic series and that's what happens when you add up all of these terms. So one plus a half plus a third plus a fourth plus a fifth. Um, we're gonna play with the harmonic series today. We're also gonna play with it tomorrow. So um, using a different, a different technique. So here's what I want to do. I want to start doing some grouping. So I'm gonna group the one third and the one fourth. And I'm going to group the one fifth to the one eighth. If I was to keep going, I would group the the one over nine plus all the way to the one over sixteen. Okay, and then one over seventeen to one over thirty-two. So these would be other groups that I would make. So I, let's see if I can get the colors to work. I uh, lost a plus. Okay. So this is how I would do my groupings. And what I want to, what I want you to notice is that this thing right here that we've looked at is bigger than, it's bigger than or equal to, but it's bigger than one plus a half plus one over four plus one over four. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to keep going. Plus, 1 over 8 plus 1 over 8 plus 1 over 8 plus 1 over 8. Those are the blue ones. Plus, what are the next terms all going to be? 1 16. 1 16th. And then the next ones are going to be 1 over 32s. How many 1 over 16s are there? Eight. Eight. So this is eight times one over sixteen. How many one over thirty twos? Sixteen. Sixteen times one over thirty two. Okay, good. So if we simplified all this stuff, we would say that this thing is equal to one plus a half, and then. Um, What's the sum of the things in pink? Half. A half plus a half. Too many pens. Sum of the stuff in the boys in blue? 
half. Half. And you start seeing the pattern, right? This is going to be plus half plus a half. And what happens when we take one plus a half plus a half plus a half plus a half plus an infinite number of halves? halves. It runs off towards infinity. It runs off towards infinity, right? And doesn't get caught on the way, right? So this is equal to infinity. So what we've just determined using this approach is we determined that this series up here, this harmonic series that we were given is bigger than infinity. or important, not, not complicated, but really important for this class, we get that the harmonic series does what? Diverges. Exactly, harmonic series diverges. Questions about that? Very good. Let's look at what this does for us. So we get that the harmonic series diverges. And so moving on, the divergence of the harmonic series, which we've just shown, was proven in the 14th century uh, by Nicolet Orasme. But this achievement fell into obscurity. Uh, what's obscurity mean? What's obscurity? Over uh, by, by society? Uh, maybe. Like no one forgot it anymore? Yeah, like it was forgotten. Uh, if, you, if you're a Lord of the Rings fan, then there's this, they tell the, the story of the rings and they're like, but there were things forgotten that should not have been forgotten. The rings fell into obscurity. Anyway, if you like Lord of the Rings. Uh, proofs of this were given in the 17th century by Pietro uh, uh, Mengoli. And then two of the Bur, I think, I don't know if these are brothers or, but they're certainly Bernoulli. part of the same family. This is the same Bernoulli that you guys all know from physics. Um, there's a whole bunch of them. They all did a lot of stuff. And one of the things they, uh, they came up with was a proof that the harmonic series diverges. Um, historically, harmonic sequences What's the difference between the sequence and the series? One is a list, one is a number. Exactly. So sequence, this one's the list. Uh, that's the list. And then the series, this one's the sum of the list. Okay. So historically, har the harmonic sequences have had a certain popularity with architects, particularly in the Baroque period when architects used them to establish proportions of floor plans, elevations, and they wanted kind of harmony in the way things were put together. Um, so previously we were talking about the Fibonacci, uh, Fibonacci numbers and the golden ratio. And so the Greeks did their designs using, um, uh, the Greeks did their designs based on the golden ratio. What he's saying is here in the Baroque period, they were using uh, harmonics. Kind of cool. Yeah. Very, very good. All right. So what that means is we can now update the list. The list. So we have the geometric series. That's what we already talked about. And then we have this new entry two, or the harmonic series, which diverges, that goes on the list. Um, and I think by the end of the week, at the moment we've got two items on the list, I think by the end of the week we may have eight items on the list. Um, so it's not hard, but it is important and it will help you 
uh, to track what's going on. All right, just one more item in this section. Um, I want to talk a little bit about what's called a telescoping series. So with geometric series, we carried out the entire evaluation process by finding a formula for the sequence of partial sums and then evaluating the limit of the sequence. Not many in infinite series can be subjected to this sort of analysis. It's kind of a pain. Another class is called the telescoping series. Um, and in this case, it can, it can be done. done. All right, so let's play with the telescoping series. And if all goes according to plans, I may even have a little video clip to show you at the end. Here's the deal. Uh, telescoping series come in all shapes and sizes. Um, but one of the popular ones is these kind of rational fraction-y types of things. I don't know if fraction -y is a word, but fraction-y things. Uh, rational expressions would be more precise. What we're gonna do is we're going to uh, work with partial fractions on this thing, just like you did in calculus two or maybe uh, differential equations. So this would be two over n plus three times n plus one. And we said, oh, this can be equal to a, over n plus three plus b over n plus one. <laughs> All of your Bernoulli jokes are pretty funny, by the way. So if we clear our denominators, we get that two equals a times n plus one plus b times n plus three. If we let n equal negative one. So if n equals negative one, you have negative one plus three or two. So two equals um, two b, so b equals one. If we let n equal negative three, negative three plus one, negative two. So at two equals negative two a or a equals negative one. So how does all this work? What we're saying is, is that the series from n equals one to infinity of two over n squared plus four n plus three equals the series of, from n equals one to infinity of uh, let me write it in the positive order first. So one over n plus one minus one over n plus three. Side note, you might want to split up this summation and say, hey, I should be able to split this up into two summations. You can't do it because these individual uh, series will diverge and so you can't split it, split it apart. But the good news is if you write this out, this cool thing happens. So hang, hang with me, I think we're gonna be about a minute long today. So this is going to be, if you put in one, one over two minus one over four. Then put in two plus one over three minus one over five plus one over four minus one over six plus, what am I up to? One over five minus one over seven plus one over six minus one over eight, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And what you should notice is that we have a minus one fourth and a plus one fourth. And you have a minus one fifth and a plus one fifth. And a minus one sixth and a plus one sixth. And so all that remains, all these terms are going to cancel except for the one half and the one third.
leaving you with just five over six, which is pretty doggone cool. Um, let me end with a little movie clip, which might explain why it is that this gets called a telescoping series. Um, I think I'm gonna talk over the clip instead of sharing it. So this is from a film some of you might remember. Um, uh, one of the Pirates of the Caribbean films. And so notice that they have the telescopes and at this point you can take the telescope and you can collapse it into a small sort of sort of thing. And so think about the giant, the long telescope like Barbosa has is that's all the terms together. So this is like, you know, first fraction plus second fraction minus next one plus da da, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you have all, each of those terms is representing one of the, each of those lengths of, of the telescope is representing one of these fractions, but then we can collapse the whole thing down into a single little chunk, um, which is what's left. Uh, you have the, the long version, but then it gets shortened into just one little bit because all the things kind of fit inside. And hence it's called a telescoping uh, series, which is pretty nifty. So, uh, so what, does, what fancy mathematical term is a smiley face? Um, I think it is called, in this case, in this particular case, it was like a, like a, a mildly optimistic zero. So I think mildly optimistic zero is a, the more technical way of saying smiley face. Yeah. Um, good question. Um, Wait, as, so, sorry. So you're just saying like, I'm pretty sure that the rest of this, these terms are going to cancel out. That's why it's like mildly optimistic. Oh, I'm fully optimistic. They all do cancel out. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. No, I was just, I'm mildly optimistic trying to uh, read the, the degree of happiness that's in this particular zero. So this is a, it's a zero. Yeah. So thanks everyone. Um, May, as we conclude today, we got to do a little bit of musical math with the harmonic series. We got to mess around with the geometric sequence, which is pretty cool. And we ended with the telescoping series, which is uh, pretty cool and clever watching it come together. So in light of that telescoping series, may all of your uh, problems and obstacles in your life collapse together into one single uh, little, little bit that you can look through. So in all, to be much more manageable. So have a wonderful day, everyone. Uh, feel free to hang on the line if you have questions, but that concludes class and I will see you all tomorrow. Industry. Thanks to see you tomorrow. Take care. Thank you. All well, you guys' puns are pretty funny. Oh my gosh. Rhyme all the time. Math crimes, nice. Enrique, Joseph, questions? <laughs> Super nice, Enrique. Thank you. I like that a lot. Thanks. It can be understood That's a lot of those. tough, thorough thought. It understood through tough, thorough thought, though. Oh my I thought nice. I thought they were all pronounced the same when I first saw them. But yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> but they aren't. Um, what do you mean? I think I just... Can I think of any questions? I feel like. All right, this is going to be the last joke of the day. What is gravity? Um, I feel like I know this. Nobody knows what gravity is. Come on. It seems like Newton did, no, or no. whoever figured it. Yeah. A heavy topic? I don't know. What is it? 
terrible yeah, movie. That's, that's what we're trying to figure out. Like if we're like physics articles nowadays or like we're measuring gravitational waves, trying to see what is gravity. Like we can say, we can run experiments and say, yeah, this is what happens through the influence of gravity. But it's not like a photon where we can say, yeah, photons are composed of these two things coming out and two things coming out, quarks and whatnot. Like gravity, we don't have like a fundamental, it's made of two parts of this, three parts of that, five parts of this. Mm -hmm. Huh. So my inside joke, whenever a... Oh, exactly. Well, I thought... Um... Oh, um, that whenever... Sure something and someone says, hey, are there any questions? It's like the fundamental one. What is gravity? <laughs> oh. Nice. <laughs> nice. I see. <laughs> nice. I get it then. I was about to say, I thought people were like trying to discover like gravitational waves or something like that. Or yeah, something. We've, we've detected a few. I know like sometime last year we detected the first one and now we have like two other devices that are measuring them. Mm. Indeed, yeah. It's, I, gravity is a uh, mass. Oh, wait, no. Uh, it's constant. That's all I know. We, we know that objects that have mass like bend space and time but we haven't like detected a gravitron or something yeah it's true well it seems like um for the stuff we're doing right it seems like a lot of it's review it seems like now we're getting into the the more like new concepts but it seems like most of this is review you mean in this chapter so far yeah in the previous chapter as well for chapter 10 uh i think that in some because of the well have you guys had differential equations yeah so because you had differential equations because you played with power series in um in calculus three then that means that you've actually played with a whole bunch of these topics before um and oh. it's almost like you did your other studies out of order and so mm. we're coming back and you you talked about things like convergence and divergence and you probably played with geometric series and i think you probably had this harmonic series and the alternating harmonic series but you never you just were we just said here's what it is use it we didn't give you any explanation of why it was the way it was okay so it's sort of like it's review but it's more like we're coming back behind and we're explaining things that you've already used and done before okay yeah it's like i saw example two and i was like oh i want to do the the ratio test on this mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> and, and we're going to get the ratio test in a little bit longer the one thing to note is that the ratio test will tell you whether the series converges or diverges mm -hmm. um, but it wouldn't tell you what the sum is oh yeah but the formula that we were playing with actually gives you a number um, mm -hmm. that is very true yeah, it's a very grave thought. Okay. Sweet. Cool. Other so, thoughts, questions? I do. Um, I went to a school in California, and it was a semester system. Okay. So I still haven't seen this material that I feel like I learned then, but don't we also have like a, a power rule? I think I mentioned it the other day, like if the um, – the exponent on something is greater than one it's going to converge so if like you have like one over some number to the first power it's like oh it doesn't get there fast enough like there was this one um uh like philosophy question once where it's like if you approach something and only get the half the distance do you ever get there you know paradox like, yeah yeah and if the math is like as long as it's the power greater than one it will but if it's just half, you'll never get there. You may be able to barely see it. Be like less than two inches away, but you'll never yeah, get there. Yeah, P, there you go. We haven't covered this yet, right? Right. So this thing converges. Oh, P. Yeah. As long as P is greater than one. If when P is greater than one. Exactly. Right. So this is, this is what's called a P series. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get it in the... And I think it's in the next section. Nice.
it's, it's, they start blurring together, but I think it's in the next section. Okay. Um, you already did it a little bit in Calc 2. Hmm. You would have had the integral from 1 to infinity of dx over x to the p. Mm -hmm. And this one converged for p bigger than 1. Okay. So this would have been a place that at high line you would have done it. Mm. I mean, if, if you took calc two here, mm -hmm. and then we're going to get this one, the the P series thing tomorrow. Gotcha. And then also, if I remember, there's also I don't think we've done it yet. Some, like, sometimes all this blurs together, but there's also mm -hmm. like a comparison test where it's like we yeah. know this converges and this is greater than that, therefore it must converge. Yeah. Or this one diverges and it's less than it, therefore it diverges. Right. Yep. That's uh, that's Monday or that's Friday and Monday or Friday and Tuesday. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's yeah, just you're not really, crazy. Mm -hmm. It's just been tripping me out that it's like, oh my gosh, like when is this going to show up? And I keep like trying to say, is it this? And it's like, no, not yet. And it's like, oh, not yet. <laughs> yeah. It's teasing you. Yeah. The one of the nice parts is if maybe it's worth. Let me start my sense over again. Given that you've seen some of this stuff before, it might be worth paging through some of the the sections that are to come and to, to, to go like, oh, okay, it's going to come here. And then as we're learning these topics, think about the progression of why they're happening when they're happening. Oh. So oh. for example, the, the geometric series that we've learned about today, the P series that we're going to get tomorrow aren't actually that valuable because they have they only work in, in a very, very specific narrow instance. Yes. But once you have the comparison test, mm -hmm. they let us take some weird thing, compare to those known series, a P series and a geometric series, and get way, way more power out of those simple examples. Gotcha. Okay. Does that make sense? It does. So you sort of think about how the topics come together um, rather than thinking about them as individual things that have no connection to each other right okay i don't i still keep referencing my old textbook and the old chapters what's the, old, if we were what's, to what's say the book uh early transcendals eighth edition of stewart stewart yes yeah, stewart yeah so that would be we just we just finished 11.2 of stewart tomorrow we're going to do 11.3 of stewart friday we're okay do, i see it yep Okay, sweet. So then I'll, I'll do that. Thank you. I now, yes, that was a good idea. I'll definitely do that. Cool, cool. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Dusty. Thank you, Joseph. It's good talking to you. And yeah, uh, have a great indeed. day. Peace, yeah, Joseph. You too as well. See you later. Sounds good. Peace out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm going to go get some food myself. Uh, food is good. Thanks, All right. Dustin. I'll catch you tomorrow. Take care. Cheers.